Hi, in this Quick Surface tutorial, we will cover how to get started. Quick Surface is a standalone 3D reverse engineering software designed to create CAD models from 3D scans, which you can then export for other applications such as CNC machining, 3D printing, assemblies, and more. In this video, we will go through the basics of how to use the software. Let's begin. The first thing I will do is to open a new project by going to the main button and clicking new. Here is the welcome screen. You can access the tutorials, previously open files, or you can just open a new file. At the top, you can see the main toolbar with the main tools for reverse engineering. Additionally, you can access specific tools from other menus. I will now import a mesh. If you want to rotate it, you use the middle mouse button. As well as that, if you want to move it, you can hold down the control key and again use the middle mouse button to drag it around. To zoom, you can use one of two ways. You can either use the scroll wheel or you can use shift and the middle mouse button. You can also turn on the coordinate system. This gives you a more clean view of your axes while working on your project. We can now begin working on our first reverse engineering project. Our goal is to make this Lego block out of one main cuboid and four cylinders. To do this, we will use sketches to make a profile of our scan data and then use that data to make 2D sketches for extrusion. We do this by clicking on the 2D sketch button and then moving the arrows to where we want to get our sketch data from. In our case, we'll set the offset to 5 millimeters. When you are ready, you can simply click Create and your sketch will be done. To create our 2D sketch, we will use the Extract Primitives tool. This tool lets you use the data to make primitives. Our software lets you fit many different primitives, ranging from lines, arcs, and circles, to more complex shapes like slots, hexagons, and curves. In the case of the Lego block, we will use the Rectangle tool to extract the primitive. For more control, you can change how big you want your brush to be. Now, you can select over the part that you want to extract. If you are unhappy with the results, you can simply click Ctrl Z and try again. This is now good for me, so I will click back and then OK. Now, as you can see, we have created our first sketch. I will show the mesh so we can see where it is. The next step is to create the main body, which we will make by extruding our sketch. We do this by selecting our sketch and clicking on the first button that pops up. If you hover over it, you will notice that it says it's the extrude button. We can click it. This will create our first extruded shape. The handles on the screen can be moved to change the length of the extrusion. However, we will use something else. We will use snapping. When we enable snapping, you will notice that the color deviation map will get automatically turned on. For demonstration purposes, I will set the deviation to 0.05 mm. However, this can be adjusted to your preferred degree of accuracy. If you try to move the arrows again, you'll see that they jump to the points with the least deviation. They match the point at which this yellow circle is at. 
As you can see, because of manufacturing and scanning error, you can't get a perfectly non-deviated plane. However, we can try get as close as possible. If we rotate to the bottom of the brick, we can repeat the same process. Now that I'm happy with the results, I will click OK. As you can see, the main body has been created. The next step is to create the cylinders. I will select the top plane and I'll create a sketch from it. Again, we can move the sketch to a more ideal spot. However, I will use one millimeter as an example. We can click Create and do a similar process as we did for the other plane. Using the Fit Primitives tool, we will draw over one of the circles. By selecting on the circle, we can use the Duplicate Entities tool. This essentially is a tool for both circular and linear patterns. For this block, a linear pattern is more suitable. Now, using the arrows, we can roughly put it in the right place. Now, with that, we can simplify the position to 7.9. Now, if we mirror it in the Y direction, we can again set the spacing to 7.9 millimeters. Now, with the completion of the four circles, we complete the sketch. The next step is to extrude the circles. Using the snapping tool, we will snap it to the top of the mesh. With the bottom of the sketch, we will drag it into the main body so the software can more easily calculate it. With all of the models created, the next step is to combine them into one. To do this, we can click on both features in the object list. and click Combine. As you can see, there is only one object in the menu and our body was combined. The final step is to add some rounding on the top cylinders. We will use the Fillet tool. We do this by going to Fillet slash Chamfer, selecting our edges, making sure we have the Tolerance button checked, and simply using the arrows to move them down to a well-fit fillet. Once we're happy with what we have, we can click OK. You are now complete with your model. If you want to open this CAD model in another software, simply click Export and save it in a CAD format. If you want to learn more specific features about the software, you may be interested in the other tutorials on the main page. But until then, good luck on your 3D reverse engineering journey.